when to add norepinephrine, how much to add, how to titrate it, increase or decrease, what should be the target, what is the dose and how to prepare that solution and then what is there on the infusion pump in ml per hour. I think these might be the question in your mind and I'll be discussing everything over here about vasopressors and anotropic agents in this video in a simplified manner. So keep watching this video till the end. Now, vasopressors and inotropic agents, they are two different terms. As the name says vasopressor, vaso means vessel and pressor means the pressure it is created. So it causes, all these vasopressor agents causes vasoconstriction. Whereas inotropic means, ino means fibers, tropic means increasing efficiency uh, of the myocardium, right? The fibers of the myocardium, hence it causes contractility of the heart. So vasopressors causes vasoconstriction, whereas inotropic causes cardiac contraction. Now the agents which comes under vasopressors are norepinephrine, vasopressin, phenylephrine, epinephrine and dopamine. Whereas on the other side, under inotropic agents, we have dobutamine, milrinone, isoproterenol, epinephrine and dopamine. Now what you can see in this in both sides, we have epinephrine and dopamine which is common, right, which can act as vasopressors and inotropic agents but again depends upon the dosage which we are using, right, and I'll be talking about that as well. Now a brief about receptors, alpha 1, right, so I, I know it is boring but yes, we have to, we need to know, right? I'll be coming on to the interesting part, right? Very soon. So alpha-1 is there on the blood vessels causing vasoconstriction where norepinephrine very commonly acts with this because the main receptor on which norepinephrine acts is alpha-1 causing vasoconstriction. Beta-1, remember we have one heart, so beta-1 and uh, they causes increased contractility and increase of heart rate and very commonly the drug which causes Beta-1 action is epinephrine and dobutamine. Beta-2, two, two, remember we have two lungs, right? And it acts on the bronchus of the lungs, causing bron bronchodilatation. And epinephrine, let's say it acts on beta-2 also, it causes bronchodilation. Then we have V1 receptors, which are present on the vessels. Uh, uh, so vasopressin acting on V1, causing vasoconstriction. Then we have the D1 receptors, which are not commonly used nowadays and we are not using that dose of dopamine, right? Although it causes renal and splanchnic vasodilatation. Now, before jumping on to the each drug, we need to have certain rules, right? When we start, when we think about starting these vasopressor agents or inotropic agents, very first one is always, always make sure you have a central line. Whenever there's acute scenario, patient is hypotensive, yes, as a short term, you can start from a peripheral line. But when you see and when you assess, yes, the requirement is going on a high side, always try to secure a central line catheter or central catheter, right? So that is very important. Secondly, you have to always assess ECG, the map of a patient, urine output of a patient and lactate of a patient. So these four should be always, always assessed. Third, never delay the start of vasopressor or anotropic agent and never be in a, in a hurry to just stop it, right? Just for the sake of it because patient wants or the relative wants or your consultant wants, right? Or you are feeling happy that yes, you have titrated, no, right? So take time, right? Let the blood pressure stabilize and then titrate or then decrease it, right? And fourth, you have to have a set goal. Your goal should be to maintain a mean arterial pressure more than equal to 65 millimeters mercury. So these goals are very important, right? When we are going with these drugs. Now, coming on to the most interesting part, right? About these drugs. Talking about the first drug, which is norepinephrine. Now, to prepare that, we take two ampules. One has two milligrams, so two ampule has four milligram, and we take in 50 ml syringe. Now, uh, the starting dose of norepinephrine is 0.05 microgram per kg per minute this seems to be very difficult right microgram per kg per minute and all so i'll just simplify if you consider uh starting on a 70 kg uh patient then yes the dose in ml per hour which is there on your infusion pump comes out to be 2.62 ml per hour so this is what you need to start the patient so just remember 
a starting dose is 2.5 ml per hour on the infusion pump if you have taken two ampules or of norepinephrine i'm just simplifying it right and you can uh, go up till the maximum is one microgram per kg per minute obviously taking into account and titrating right and keeping the map more than equal to 65 millimeters mercury now comes the point when to add on the next one which is vasopressin if the requirement is more than 0.2 microgram per kg per minute or maybe 0.3 microgram per kg per minute please add vasopressin again this seems to be diff difficult right microgram per kg per minute now remember on the infusion pump if the dose increases more than 10 ml per hour or maybe 15 ml per hour please add vasopressin don't keep waiting and keep assessing better to add vasopressin it is always vasopressin is added to decrease the dose of norepinephrine right now talking about the second one which is vasopressin it is given at a fixed dose of 0.03 units per minute remember it doesn't have kg it is not dependent upon the body weight it is 0.03 units per minute and this is prepared by taking two ampules so one ampule has 20 units per ml uh, so we take two which is 40 units and we dilute in 40 ml which comes out to be one unit per ml now again if you start on the infusion pump it will be 1.8 ml per hour this is what you need to start the maximum which you can go ahead is 0 0.04 units per minute which comes out to be 2.4 right although uh, vasopressin is said as fixed dose you can just go ahead with 1.8 right it is not decreased or increased much but yeah if you want to increase you can go ahead till 2.4 up after that there is no benefit there is more risk and causing ischemia right so don't increase the vasopressin more than 2.5 ml per hour right so so if you have taken two amplitudes right that is why i am mentioning the concentration as well right third is epinephrine uh one ampule has one milligram and we take four so four milligram in 50 ml and the starting dose is 0 0.01 microgram per kg per minute and if you calculate again for a 70 kg patient it comes out to be 0.53 ml per hour on the infusion pump you can take the screenshot of this uh, whole chart right once it gets completed so that it becomes easy for you and the maximum dose of epinephrine is one microgram per kg per minute as like norepinephrine then coming on to the fourth one which is very important is dobutamine why i mentioned very important is it has a separate role it has a role in cardiogenic shock whenever the cardiac output is low always always prefer to go with dobutamine but the problem with dobutamine is when you start it causes hypotension in that scenario you can just take assistance of norepinephrine once the blood pressure is built up and now you see cardiac output is low or let's say patient have very low ejection fraction add on give dobutamine to the patient it increases the contractility which is very important now uh, for dobutamine uh, one ampule has 5 ml containing 250 milligram and now take this 250 milligram in 50 ml the starting dose is 2 microgram per kg per minute and the maximum is 20 microgram per kg per minute right and, and and if you talk about ml per hour you just start with 1.68 that is a starting dose in ml per hour on the infusion pump coming on to the last which is dopamine although it is not used commonly nowadays but yes we need to know that also uh, so one ampule has 5 ml containing 200 milligram so we take two amples of dopamine comes out to be 400 milligram in 50 ml and the starting dose is 5 microgram per kg per minute where it acts on the beta receptor right beta 1 causing the contraction of the heart more than 10 it acts on alpha causing vasoconstriction and the maximum dose of dopamine is 20 microgram per kg per minute so uh, but also remember about dopamine that it has a very high risk of causing arrhythmia so it is not used nowadays in the clinical practice much now to summarize first of all start with norepinephrine very commonly in septic shock and the other shock also you can start that right except for cardiogenic so start with norepinephrine 
uh, with let's say 2.5 ml per hour if i talk about the infusion pump increase to 5 and then 10 once it has reached 10 ml per hour right after increasing add on vasopressin which is added in a fixed dose which is 1.8 ml per hour the maximum you can increase is 2.4 not beyond third add epinephrine and the aim should be the target should be to keep map more than 65 and also remember to treat the cause right vasopressor inotropic are just to support the blood pressure but we have to treat the cause now if the other scenario is there's a cardiogenic shock where cardiac output is on the lower side or uh, you know about the ejection fraction patient ejection fraction is low patient is very cold right and and uh, in that scenario you have to add dobutamine now if there's a refractory shock right patient is not improving please consider adding iv hydrocortisone 200 milligram per day right that is very very important so this is how we manage and also in the icu uh, very commonly we use the ivc collapsibility index or we can use ppv pulse pressure variation or you can use the stroke volume variation so these are the parameters which tells you should you give fluid or not right that the patient is fluid responsive or not which is very important right you can't just keep giving vasopressor or the inotropic agent you have to assess uh, the fluid status as well so this is all about the vasopressors and the inotropic support right i try to simplify it and do leave your comment about this video and if you like it please hit the like button and share with your colleagues and obviously do not forget to subscribe this channel and I'll be up uploading and updating more such contents about which is to be used in emergency, in the wards, in the ICUs, right, in the clinical practice. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.